with him. Somebody say God was with Joseph. Say from the pit to, the, to a slave in Potiphar's house, the Lord was with Joseph. In verse 20, in chapter 20, uh, 39, verse 20, we read this. And Joseph's master took him, put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in the prison. But in verse 21, but the Lord was with Joseph. People were trying to kill his dream, but somebody say the Lord was with Joseph. You believe that? Say amen. In verse 23, it says the keeper of the prison looked not on the things that were under his hands because the Lord was with Joseph and that which Joseph did, the Lord made him to prosper. Oh, can somebody say amen? Joseph was in the pit and then he was sold into slavery and then he went to prison. But somebody say the Lord was with Joseph and whatever Joseph did... The Lord made it to prosper. Can somebody say amen? Prosper. Hallelujah. You know why? He, was in, he, he went from a pit to slavery to prison, but God was with him. And everywhere, the, everything that he did, God made it to prosper. Everything that he put his hands to, God made it to prosper. Do you know why? Because Joseph was faithful where he was. He was committed where he was, and he took care of what he had. If you are not faithful, if you and I are not faithful where we are, it don't matter what we're going through. It don't matter what we're facing. It don't matter what we're dealing with. If we are not faithful where we are and we don't take care of what we got, God is not going to allow us to go any farther. Did you hear me? If you're not faithful right here, right now, you don't take care of what you've got right here, right now, God is not going to let you take the next step. Because with maturity comes responsibility. With maturity comes responsibility. And we want to run from responsibility. But God is not in that, ladies and gentlemen. God is a call in this church. Three-year anniversary. It's time for you to step up a little bit. I'm calling you uh, to a place of responsibility. Joseph took care. He didn't question God. He didn't doubt God. You may be in a pit right now, ladies and gentlemen, sir or ma'am. You may be going through something personally in your life. Joseph never questioned God. He never doubted God. He didn't back slide he didn't murmur or complain he just held on to what God had showed him and because of that God was with him what with what he was going through and you read the scripture Joseph character Joseph's character stands out among the highest in the land ever 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 in history Joseph character stands out Joseph did not let temptation uh, turn him aside Joseph did not let calamity shake his faith in God Joseph stood the test and I'm going to tell you right now the pit is going to test your character the process is going to test your character what you are going through right now is going to test your character ladies and gentlemen Whoo! yes it does Joseph might not have been able to see the palace from the pit, but God was with him. Thirteen years from the pit to the palace, God was with him. He still had his dream. And I'm here to tell you right now that God is with you. You might be in a pit right now in your mind, in your heart, in your spirit, in your soul, in your life. You might be in a pit right now. You might be in a struggle. You might be in a battle, but God is with you. You might be going through a storm right now and somewhere in your life, but God is, is with you. You might have thought that some things were about to break through and some prayers were about to be answered and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, some things began to crumble and you found yourself in a pit and things begin to look like they took a reverse and went in reverse but I'm here to tell you that you are going to make it you might be struggling right now but you're going to make it this church you better hear me I'm feeling it in the Holy Ghost there's people that said this church wasn't going to make it this pastor wasn't going to make it but somebody needs to say I'm still here 
Somebody needs to say, there ain't nobody going to steal my dream. Got to get a fresh revelation that God is still with you. Look at your neighbor and say, it don't matter where you are right now or what you're struggling with right now. God is with you. You know what you have that Joseph didn't have? We'll close with this scripture right here. Joseph couldn't see the palace from the pit. Joseph didn't have anybody in the pit with him, encouraging him on, saying, you're going to make it, you're going to make it, you're going to make it. Joseph didn't have anybody in there patting him on the back. Joseph didn't have anybody in there encouraging him. But he, you know what you've got that Joseph didn't have? It would, it would have probably been easy if Joseph would have had this. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. If Joseph could have looked in here and said, oh, yeah, check that out. Look at that. Oh, that's cool. All right, I'm going to go in the pit. To, and yeah, okay, all right, I'm going to go. I'm going to be slow to slavery. But oh, yeah, look, the Lord's going to be with me no matter where I go, what I do. The Lord's going to be with me. If Joseph could have read this, he would have probably, it would have probably been a lot better for him, a lot easier for him if he would have had the Word of God. But he didn't have that, Pastor Harris. You know what you got that Joseph didn't have? You got the Word of God. Joseph didn't have that, but you got the Word of God. You know what you got that Joseph didn't have? You got the promise of God. And Joseph did not have the promise of God, ladies and gentlemen. It don't matter what you're going through, church. You got the promise of God. You need to make up your mind. I'm going to make it. And here's the promise of God to you. Hebrews 13 and 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness. And be content with such things as you have. For God has said. Somebody say God said. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say God said. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say quit sniffing the meatloaf. And say God said. Amen. I'm fixing to go back here and lay hands on that meatloaf. and Y'all going to go back here to eat maggots are going to start coming out of it. Not really. Somebody say, God said. God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Listen to it in the Greek, ladies and gentlemen. The Greek, in the Greek, there are five negatives in this, in this verse. There are five negatives. Uh, there are two verbs and one pronoun twice repeated. Five negatives uh, in this little short verse here uh, to let you and I know uh, that it is absolutely impossible for God to forsake us. Greek people that study Greek will tell us that it is almost impossible to translate, literally translate this verse. If we literally translated this verse, it would read something like this. For he, God himself, has said, I will not in any way fail you, nor give up on you, nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake you, nor let down or relax my hold upon you. Assuredly not, so that we may take comfort and, and so that we are encouraged and we can confidently and boldly say, the Lord is my helper and I will not fear. Ladies and gentlemen, God has made a promise to you. You can take courage. God has said, I will absolutely in no way, form, or fashion leave you. I won't leave you helpless. I won't leave you comfortless. You got to keep dreaming. There is absolutely no way whatsoever I will ever, ever leave you is what God is trying to tell somebody. I know what this circumstance has said. And I know what this dilemma has said. And I know the way this looks. And I know the way that looks. But somewhere in your life, somewhere in your pit, you are going to have to make up your mind. I'm going to take the Word of God over the Word of man. 
Because your praise and your worship, you better hear me. Give me another minute or two. Your praise and your worship is not going to take you over. Your praise and your worship is not going to bring you out. Your shout is going to last about this long when you get out that door. This is what's going to bring you over. And this is what's going to take you out. While you are in the middle of a struggle, the middle of a battle, the middle of being forsaken, the middle of being talked about, the middle of being let down, the middle of being uh, uh, run down, you have got to get a hold of a word from God that says, I'm not going anywhere. I got you covered. Uh, Pastor Warwick, yesterday, I got you back. I'm going to be with you. I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to forsake you. Keep dreaming. Keep dreaming about revival. Keep dreaming. Keep dreaming about souls. Keep dreaming about your family being saved. Keep dreaming about your prayers being answered. Come on, keep on dreaming. And talk about your children being saved. Talk about your husband or your wife coming in. Keep on dreaming. It don't matter what it looks like out here. What did God say about it? God said you're going to make it. God said you're going to come out. God said you're going to come through. God said just hold on to my promise. Don't let the pit poison your promise. Don't let the pain that you're feeling paralyze your faith in the promises of God. Keep dreaming. Stand with me. With growth, listen to me, children, 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 children. Shh. Listen to me. With growth, with growth comes dream stealers. Dream killers always come with growth. When you grow, there's tears going to be sown in among the wheat. People are going to come in. They're going to look happy. They're going to smile. And they're going to look like, ooh, this is an awesome church. But under that mask, under that mask they got on, there's a dream killer. Mm -hmm. That comes. That comes. That happens with growth. That happens with growth. You know how to beat that? You know how to overcome that? You get faithful. You get on fire. You stay committed. You stay dedicated. Amen. You. Yes. You. You step up and say, what is my role in this church? You step up and say, where do I fit? Where do I belong? What can I do, pastor? You know how to keep the dream alive, keep the dream burning. Not just the dream of this church, but, the, but your own individual dream for your own life in God. You know how to keep it burning and keep it growing. You get in here and you say, what can I do? What can I do, Pastor? Where do I fit? Where do I belong? Where do I belong? Oh, Sister Amy, where do I fit? Sister, where do I fit? Where do I belong? What can I do, Pastor? That's how you grow this dream. That's how you grow your dream. That's how you stay strong in the Lord. If you're tired of being miserable, you're tired of being unhappy. If you're tired of being cold one day and hot the next. If you can't figure out why you're on fire and you're, you're just fired up and you're ready to go. And all of a sudden, just a few days, stuff comes against you and you feel like quitting. Mm. You know what that is? That's the enemy trying to steal your dream. That's right. Amen. How do I fight that preacher? How do I get happy? How do I stay on fire? You step up. Yes. Hallelujah. You step up and you say, man of God, I'm going to hold your hands up. I'm going to stand. Yes. I'm here. I got yes. your back. What can I do? What can I Praise God. Praise God. If everybody in my church was just like me, what kind of church would my church be? 
Close your eyes all over this building right now. Jesus, Jesus. Joseph's story ends in Genesis 50. He said, God meant this. Everything that happened to me, he said, God meant it in the good to bring to pass to save much people alive. How's your story going to end? How's your dream going to end? You may be here tonight. You may feel like your dream is buried. Life, pain, heartache, disappointment, letbacks, letdowns, setbacks have buried your dream and your purpose by life has been choked out. I'm telling you it's time to dream again. And I feel the Spirit of the Lord telling me right now. If you want your dreams to come to pass. If you want your dreams to be fulfilled. Grab a hold of the dream of this church. Grab a hold of the, king, the dream of the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Grab a hold of the dream and the vision of the kingdom of God. And all these things will be added unto you. Your dream will begin to come to pass. Your dreams will begin to fulfill. You'll see those kids begin to come back. You'll see that spouse begin to come. You'll see things begin to change in your home. In your home atmosphere, you'll see things begin to change. Because you're not just personal dreaming, you're kingdom dreaming. Take your neighbor by the hand. And I'm done. There are people in this town there are people in this town that hate this church there are people in this area that hate this church I feel it I feel it I feel it oh I feel it they have spoken death over this church. They have spoken death over this pastor and his wife. Oh, my God, I feel such an anointing right now. I wonder if there's anybody that belongs to this church. I wonder if there's anybody that's a member of this church that's willing to step out of their pew right now and walk up to this front and, and, and not, ju not, not just mumble some things under your breath that would begin to speak and prophesy life over this church life over your pastor life 
over his family. Life over this church. Life over the young people. Life over the children. Revival in the young people. Revival in the children. Oh, you say, oh, we got a house full right now. Oh, we got, oh, but there's people out there speaking death against you right now. There's dream killers right now. There's dream killers trying to destroy this church right now. I wonder if there's anybody that'll step out of their pew right now and walk to this front and say, no, 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 no. It ain't going to happen on my watch. I'm not, you're not going to kill my dream. You're not going to kill my pastor's dream. You're not going to kill my pastor's vision. Is there anybody? Is there, come on, speak it. I speak life over this church. Come on, I speak souls. I speak revival. Come on, step out, step out, step out. You got to get bold, church. You got to get bold. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Start prophesying right now. Life. Start prophesying revival. Start prophesying we're going forward and not back. Come on, start speaking it out of your mouth. We're blessed. We're blessed. Our church is growing. We're blessed financially. We're blessed. Oh, peace. Peace in my house. Peace in my home. Peace in my family. Peace in my marriage. Peace in my relationship. Come on, speak it, church. Speak it. Speak it. Come on, speak it in the name of Jesus. Speak it in the name of Jesus. I'm going to live for God. I'm going to be saved. I'm going to be happy in my walking relationship with God. Refuse to let something steal your dream. Refuse to let somebody steal your dream. come out of your mouth I will be committed I am committed I will be committed I will stay committed I'm going to step up I'm going to take my place hallelujah to God come on somebody they're praying all over this building right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus God's got it for you 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 God's got it for you. God's got it for you. Come on, God's got it for you. Reach out and take it. Reach out and take it. Reach out and take it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm tired of being defeated. I'm tired of being defeated. Come on, in my body. I'm tired of hurting. I'm tired of being defeated in my body. In the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Reach out and take it. Reach out and take it. Don't let something steal your dream. Don't let the enemy steal your dream right now. Don't let the enemy steal your vision. Jesus name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Make up in your mind. Make up in your mind. Make up in your mind.
to do it for you. God cannot do it for you, but he'll give you the power to do it. He'll give you what it takes to do it. Make up your mind. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Jesus, yes, I will. Yes, I will, Lord. Yes, I will. 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 In the name of Jesus, yes, I will, Lord. Yes, I will, Lord. Yes, I will, Lord. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Hallelujah. 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 You come, my rain. Oh, yes, I will. 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 Come on, don't let your dream leave you behind. Come on, come on, come on. 
Come on, make up your mind. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. God is giving you strength. 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 Make up your mind. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
God, what a wonderful day we've had. Praise God, and now we get to, some of the people are already back there eating, and that's all right, I'm glad that they are, and I'm glad that you waited to have the sermon end or have the service end. If you're new here, I want you to come back. I don't believe it's any mistake that you're here. I want you to make this your home church so that we can continue to guide you in the Word of God and the Spirit of God. Right now, I'm going to pray for the food of you. Bow your heads. Jesus, we thank you for this wonderful fellowship. We thank you for these wonderful men of God. We thank you for the ability to stay in church for three hours <laughs> and enjoy your presence the whole time. We ask you to bless this food to the nourishment of our bodies. Bless the rest of our fellowship today. Let us make a new friend in the house of God and make this our home. Amen. In Jesus' name, in the church, said amen. amen. Somebody clap on to the Lord one more time. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You are dismissed. Amen.